Right now, I'd like to welcome our first speaker of the day. He is a senior director of the Rebuilding Exchange in Chicago. Please give a warm welcome for Bryant Williams. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Bryant Williams. I'm the uh, senior director for the Rebuilding Exchange, um, a small nonprofit of so social enterprise with a mission to create a market for salvage and reclaim building materials. Um, before I really dive into my presentation, I want to thank you all for helping me um, live out my dream. You know, working at the Rebuilding Exchange, when I'm, you know, being a part of this uh, summit and um, a lot of the things that I've, I've been doing um, in the environmental field is a part of my dream. Um, I don't know how many of you all are familiar with the Calumet region of the Chicago area, Southside for Life, yes, yep, <laughs> represent, yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, so the, South, the Calumet region is where I was born and raised, and um, that is, to me, the birthplace of environmental justice, and I don't care what anybody else says, I will argue as long as this takes. <laughs> Hazel Johnson is the mother of environmental justice. It was born and raised over in the Calumet region, and that's where I spent my formative years. You know, um, I didn't recognize and realize what I was being impacted by um, as a kid. You know, I went to school, tiny little elementary school called Manson Elementary, not too far from uh, the Bishop Ford Freeway, which is where all of the um, the landfills, well, the vast majority of the landfills in the Chicago area, in that neck of the woods, there's. Set, what I found out later on in life is there's 75 permitted landfills, transfer stations, and large quantity generators of um, hazardous waste right within a mile of where I went to elementary school. So fast forward a couple years when I went to high school. I went to um, high school at a school called Carver, um, uh, Carver High School where uh, it was located right in the middle of all Gale Gardens. And so there's a young lady named Hazel Johnson who, um, you know, her. I believe it was her husband passed away from respiratory illness and um, you know she looked around and she realized that like a lot of her friends and family were passing away from respiratory illness and then she took a look around in a survey of the area and she saw that there were you know to the to the south and to the east of her there were landfills to the north of her there was a um, the metropolitan water reclamation district was our which is our water treatment facility and then to the west of her was the largest um, of the large quantity generators on the south side of you know, large quantity generators of hazardous waste. And so this, was, this is where I was educated. This is where I was raised and educated. And the one point in time that I did not live on that side of the, of, uh, the city, I moved over to the west, west side and, went and finished high school. And right down the street from my high school now is the very first LEED certified building in the Chicago area. Um, it's called the Center for Green Technology but I'm old enough to remember, don't, don't let the baby face fool you. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember when that thing was, the Center for Green Technology was just a, a, twink, a glimmer in somebody's eye. When I was in school, it was the largest um, fly dumping zone in the city of Chicago. So waste has followed me everywhere. You know, <laughs> it's followed me and impacted me literally my entire life. And so, you know, what I decided to do, I was, I was getting the hell out of Chicago. You know, <laughs> when I went, I went away to college, I found the exact opposite of what I grew up around. I found a little rural town, went to a small, tiny little liberal arts college. I love the college if there's any alumni here. No, no, maybe. All right. <laughs> so, um, and I studied environmental science there. You know, really what, and so what really drew me into environmental science was this book called Ishmael by a man named Daniel Quinn, anybody read Ishmael in here? Yes, thank you, thank you. So, you know, um, this is, you know, I had to read this book for a class and I go wound up reading it and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, you know, this giant silverback gorilla is teaching me how, you know, man, Western society is being so wasteful and destroying the earth and I gotta do something about it. And so I stepped out, I started on Friday, finished the book on a Sunday, changed my major to environmental studies on Monday. I had no idea what I was going to do. I just knew that, you know, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to work in the environmental field. I want to, I want to fight waste, you know, I want to eliminate waste. And, um, you know, so like I said, you guys are helping me live my dream. And my dream is having a zero waste society, you know, and everything that I've done since I left college has been le leading to that point. You know, um, a big part of it has been the work at the Rebuilding Exchange. Again, we're, 
you know, we're a nonprofit social enterprise. Our mission is to create a market for salvage and reclaim building materials. We do it by working with, we're very comparable to like a Habitat for Humanities Restore, but whereas they take donations from Lowe's, Home Depot, and Menards, we work directly with the general public. You know, so um, the weekend warriors that are fixing up their bathroom, they can donate materials to us instead of having to pay to uh, dispose of them. They get a tax write-off. We work with demolition contractors to take in building materials and upcycle them. We'll, you know, we'll take a door and sell it as a door, or we'll take that door and we'll turn it into a table, or you know, um, something something else fancy. You know, so um, we we're adding value to these materials that we're bringing in, um, but we're also um, trying to add value to people's lives. So again, remember, I grew up in the Calumet region birthplace of environmental justice, location of all of the landfills in the Chicago area. If the rebuilding exchange did not exist, these tons of materials that we're diverting from the waste stream would, be con would continue to be dumped on my, fam my family, my friends, and the people of that community. So we're also trying to hire people from those communities that are most directly impacted by, by the um, waste industry. You know, we're also, <clears throat> So we take people with barriers to employment, um, be it uh, returning home from prison, be it cognitive disabilities, homelessness. We'll, get, um, we'll provide them with different types of training, be it uh, deconstruction training, warehousing skills, woodworking skills. Um, and, and we'll employ them for six months so that they can, in addition to learning their trade, they'll get experience in it. We provide them with uh, wraparound services, resume development, tutoring so that they can go back and get a GED if they need it or, you know, um, if they need to get their licenses. Well, you know, like a, you know, a license, a driver's license will help them, will help them prepare to obtain these things so that we can help them get back into the, um, the workforce. But more importantly, we're trying to show them that one, just like these materials have a value, they still have a value. And just because you've grown up in this Calumet region and you've been dumped on and you've been treated like trash, you are not. You're a part of the society and you have something to say. You know, so um, I also, you know, so another big part of what we do there is advocacy around, uh, around the environmental field, you know, specifically around waste. Let's be honest here, it's only, it's only 150 of us in the room here, which is a lot. You know, give yourselves a round of applause. But on the flip side, waste, you know, we look at, it's the red-headed stepchild of the environmental field, you know. <laughs> well, it, it is, it, it really is, you know. Um, people are, you know, we're more focused on energy efficiency and, you know, saving the wheels and hugging trees, but we all are generating waste. And right here in the, <clears throat> in the Midwest especially, we have a waste problem. And nowhere more than Illinois than we, do we have that waste problem. Um, in the state of Illinois, we generate uh, <clears throat> we generate almost double the amount of waste per person than the um, national average. Um, in the state of Illinois, we, uh, the average person generates about 8.2 pounds of waste, whereas the national average is just a hair under four pounds. So, you know, that, but to me, and I'm gonna wrap up pretty quickly here, I see you, I am you. <laughs> I'll take my time. Oh, you, you ain't said nothing but a word. So, <laughs> uh, so um, the, really what I try and focus on in, in, in te educating and leading towards zero waste is saying that there is no such thing as waste. You know, typically, I'm, you know, typically I don't use the term waste. I refer to it as a material. What we're doing here is materials management. We're not, this isn't zero waste. We're not recycling. We're materials management experts. Because if you tell somebody that it's a material, they see it as something that has a value. And so if I commoditize it, I could do something with it. You know, so that instead of it being a piece of garbage that you can throw away, it's something that I can use to create with. It can be a piece of art. It can be a door. It can be a table. It can be, you know, a cutting board, what have you. You know, as long as you show that, that as long as you express that it's a material, people will understand that it has a value and then they'll try and figure something that can be done with it. You know, so that's what, <coughs> that's a big part of what we're doing at the Rebuilding Exchange and a lot of the other organizations that I'm involved in. You know, we're looking at, um, you know, we're really looking at food waste in the Chicago area. Um, and that ties into 
the some of the barriers associated with what you can be what can be done to lead to a zero waste society. Chicago is very um, let's say behind the times with our um, with our political system, you know. So um, you know, and, and I can say this because I'm, I'm a recovering bureaucrat. I worked for Cook County's de uh, Department of Environmental Control, um, you know, and while I was there, I, I hear that, you know, you never really recover from being a bureaucrat. You just learn to live with the symptoms. So, you know, if I, if I start sp speaking in vague terms or double speak, ignore me. It's, I'm just, you know, having a relapse. So, <laughs> so while I was at the Department of Environmental Control, I helped develop what's called the Demolition Debris Diversion Ordinance. Um, you know, so instead of any time, so any time a single family home or larger is demolished in this Bourbon Cook area, um, a minimum of 70% of that material must be diverted from the waste stream, specifically has to be recycled in some way, shape, or form. Then a minimum of 5% of that material must be set aside for material reuse. The biggest reason that we did that was we saw the opportunity for economic development associated with those building materials. Of everything that goes into the materials management stream, building materials make up 40% of it. And of what goes into the um, waste stream, <coughs> materials management stream, <laughs> building materials are the easiest to recycle and or reuse, and they have the highest value. So we're trying to create an economy in the Chicago area around these building materials. And that's why this summit is so important, because I know, person I know environmental engineering, and I know policy, but I don't know environmental design. I don't know sustainable design, so I'm really looking forward to what Craig has to say. You know, I um, I dabble in environmental justice because you know, born and raised, and all that good stuff. I've explained it a couple times, but my cousin Sharonda is an environmental justice expert, and so I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's um, in joke. We'll, we'll we'll explain later. So, <laughs> um, but. It's what's so important here is that the, the connections that we can make, you know, and so I'm really excited and really honored to be able to participate and um, really honored to have been asked to be one of the first speakers here, you know, so I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, see, this is just looking. So thank you all for your time.